this is the red hand and they're they just everything on this thing feels First off, let's preface it by saying that they're, they're about the same price point. I think the mark job, so this is really gonna be like whether you're a Ford or Chevy guy, this manometer, I think it really shows maybe why the head of the DM32. It's super intuitive to use reference on the A channel for your hose about this color. I don't think you're teaching them to think of why. It's really nice that with this company, I feel like the software they've chosen for it may be gone super. a little bit different route, maybe more like. Welcome to the Blower Door Battle Royale. Today we're going to take you through the latest offerings from the Energy Conservatory and Retrotech. Uh, maybe you're looking at getting a new blower door set up and you're kind of interested in the differences between the two. I will start preface this by saying I've ran both of these on my home and got the exact same numbers on both of them. So accuracy wise, we're not going to go too far down that path. These are, you know, developed by some pretty smart people and they're both really accurate uh, blower door system so we're not going to get into that too much we'll just walk you through piece by piece you know what you get with the kit uh, maybe what what where one might outshine the other a little bit and then we'll go from there so let's start with the frames this is the retrotech frame it's a uh, looks like a red anodized aluminum this is a very robust frame the knobs are good size to fit your hand and they're, they're just everything on this thing feels beefy and uh, well done when you put this frame together it's got these locking points here that are super nice to use uh, this is my first experience with retro tech stuff i've came up on the energy conservatory brand and i'm, I'm probably a little biased but this is a super nice frame i really like this now we'll move on to the energy conservatory frame this is the same frame i think they've been using for quite a while uh, nothing too fancy here black uh, the knobs i've always found these to be a little too small you know when you're especially when you're in behind the door when it's swung open trying to get those locked down the corners lock in with these little push buttons i've got my fingers pinched in those corners about a thousand times it works, but I think that RetroTech frame is is miles ahead of this uh, Energy Conservatory one. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just one's, uh, one's had a little more, more thought put into it, I'd say. Now we're going to take a look at the panels. This is the RetroTech model, obviously. Uh, it's pretty nice. They've got pockets sewn in here. If you got, you know, hoses, fittings, whatever. Uh, the bottom of this which I think is a nice touch, is like a trough design. They've got the corner stitched in, so it kind of makes it easier, I think, to get it set in there. They've also got the window low enough where the screen doesn't cover it, or the panel. I've got this set up to a standard 3.0, you know, 80 inch door, so. Uh, I don't know. And the other thing, this is their older panel now, I guess. They've got one with your reference hoses for your pressure sewn into the hose so you can actually just plug your reference hose right into the panel now without having to do the crawl of shame through the hole like we've all had to do and we forget it uh, so i don't know it's a pretty nice panel now we're going to move on to the energy conservatory panel uh, nothing real trick here it's a piece of you know red cloth basically uh, this little feature here has always kind of driven me nuts you have to Tuck this up, see out the window. Not that there's a lot to see, but I don't. I do like on the RetroTech one how it's a little lower. Uh, you don't have to mess with this, but that's pretty much it. On to the RetroTech fan. Uh, they use a rings or a smaller plug and hole system for their various sizes of uh, fan restriction. This main cover pops on and off with magnets. It's pretty sweet. These just pop off and you can get whatever basic size you need there for your rings. They've got a 25 foot power cord uh, for it, which is nice. You never have to drag an extension cord in with you. 
Their fan controller is built right into the side of it, so it's not a separate model. I think that's a really well thought out idea. The handle is molded in. The RetroTech finishes on this fan are all super nice. Uh, they seem really well thought out. Uh, and another on to the Energy Conservatory model. Uh, this fan for rings, you've got these little clips here. You go around to basically size your fan for whatever house you're running. Uh, it works. I've had these break. Well, I think it's been this way for a while. Uh, not too much to this fan. For the control unit, it's a separate module. This hangs up with your manometer on your door. Uh, it's got cords and stuff on it. Uh, one thing that I've always thought was just a little kind of cheap was this handle. It seems a little amateurish, but you know, it works. There's, it's kind of like the frame. It's, there's nothing fancy about it, but it, you know, day in, day out, that thing works. To do a pressurization. Now we're going to talk about cord and cable management when your blower door is set up. The RetroTech has come up with this, they call this the umbilical cord. It is a really, really slick way to manage all your hoses. Uh, keeps everything super tidy, out of the way of the fan when it's running. The power cord comes off to the side here. I think this is a really, really well thought out system. Just so nice and there's no chance of any of this stuff getting sucked into the fan. Everything's really well thought out. I think that's a really slick system. Cord management for Energy Conservatories model is just kind of an abomination, I think. It's, every cord is separate. Uh, even like when you want to run cruise control, you got this little separate cord that you got to deal with every day. I've lost these. These cords are not, like you really got to manage your cord system. They do have these little clips up here that you can tuck your cords into to kind of keep them up and out of the way, but it honestly feels kind of like an afterthought. Uh, you know, I, I know people that had their hoses get sucked into the fan before. This cord here too for the fan control is only a 12 footer. A lot of times that's not long enough to get to, you know, an outlet, so you gotta carry an extension cord. I think when you look at that, and you look at this, it's hands down, which one is just had a little more thought put into it. You'll never be able to lose one of these cords because they're wrapped up in that sheet they have for them. And again, I'm not hating on the Energy Conservatory. I've used their stuff for years, but I've always hated this because in setup, it's, you know, everything's separate to unwrap and tearing it down. You know, it's just more steps versus just one cord that kind of rules them all. So let's take a look at these manometers now. For as much as I've been a fan of this whole kit and I feel like they've put so much thought into every little detail on this, I'm not a huge fan of this manometer. I feel like the software they've chosen for it is super clunky. The whole setup and design is not intuitive at all to use. Uh, just, I don't know, I, I wish they kind of would have maybe gone a little bit different route, maybe more like the DG1000, although I know it wasn't out yet or I really, they should copy it, but it's, I don't know, it's just kind of lacking. I feel like it's a little bit of a letdown for as, as good as the rest of this kit is. Okay, so we've been kind of hard on the, the Energy Conservatory for their kit here, and maybe rightfully so, but I think they've put a ton of time into this manometer, and I think it really shows maybe why they're, they've been lacking on the rest of this stuff. This manometer is, I, I feel like, maybe years ahead of the DM32. It's super intuitive to use. Like, they've got tubing assistant on here. You know, anything you wanna do, you can just scroll through, find it. They've got little, just real well thought out design. Uh, just, you know, they've got all sorts of different, all your tests and stuff on here. So uh, I, I think it's a really, really well thought out manometer. It's really nice to use. Uh, one thing I think the difference between these two models that I, I think is not great, 
So with the Energy Conservatory, they've always used reference on the A channel for your hose to go outside, input on the B channel to go to the fan. It's just the exact opposite on the RetroTech stuff. They use reference for both hoses. It'd been nice if they just for continuity's sake, uh, if you're you know, jumping over from one brand to the other and you're not super familiar, the setup is, is not the same. RetroTech did put a lot of thought into on their ports. You know, they've got the yellow hose, goes to the yellow port, goes to the yellow fan. Get this one off. Red hose, goes to the red port, goes to the red screen. Uh, that's good. I also think it's kind of bad. When you teach people to do things just by hook this color to this color, I don't think you're teaching them to think of why they're doing the test or what what that hose is actually doing. I'm not saying that it's any different for this company. I think everybody knows, you know, at the Energy Conservatory, green always goes to grass, red goes to the fan. I think that's just kind of the standard setup to it. But, you know, it would be nice to see a little bit of continuity between the two companies. I also think that RetroTech leans a little bit on the Energy Conservatory. It's really nice that with this company, you can use the, any fan you want. You can't do that with the Energy Conservatory, but you have to use like the Energy Conservatory's flow meter uh, or flow hood, their pressure pans, their airflow uh, gauge for furnaces. So RetroTech does kind of stand on the shoulders just a little bit of the Energy Conservatory, but I don't know if that's a big deal. All right, so we've kind of gone through these. Let's, let's kind of rate them here. First off, let's preface this by saying they're, these things are, you know, they're just pretty much the same thing. I mean, they're, they're about at the same price point. I think the market is split between the two of them, about 50-50. They both are super accurate. They both do a really good job. So this is really going to be like whether you're a Ford or Chevy guy or you like DeWalt or Milwaukee, they're both going to get the job done. Uh, I've, I was an assessor for years, and I always used the... Minneapolis stuff and I've got to tell you coming into this I was a little biased but after you looking at this retro tech design if you're setting blower doors up every day this I think is worth its weight in gold not having to separately wind all these hoses and cords and you know this these are famous for always getting wrapped around here these are always about broke off out of the fan controller I, it's just a terribly sloppy design but that manometer, I just think is so much nicer to use than this one. I'm sure that, you know, once you got to using the DM32, uh, it wouldn't be all that big of a deal, but I don't know. I, I would, definitely wouldn't be afraid to own either one of these kits. I hope in the future that the Energy Conservatory is looking at what RetroTech is doing. I think these companies kind of, you know, they, they do lean on each other and I think they kind of steal ideas from each other and everything else. So I hope that uh, the Energy Conservatory in the future addresses some of this and makes a nicer, cleaner kit. This is this is, it would just be so much friendlier for the person doing the energy audit to use every day. Uh, but, you know, it really can't be a true battle royale with just two competitors. And there's always somebody lurking back in the backstage in the battle royales. Who's this? Oh, here we go. Everybody's favorite. The tried and true DG700. I think we should all just go back to this. Who, who doesn't like this little guy? We'll just pick him. So one last thing I wanted to uh, apologize for. I've watched some of this footage now and I realize there's a ton of uh, popping and background noise. I'm out here in my barn filming this stuff. Uh, so... I don't even really notice that I'm out here so much. The roof pops when it gets hot and the chickens are growing, whatever, but uh, hopefully it's not too terrible to deal with. Thanks guys.